Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Monday sort of afternoon here in Australia. So, you know, Sunday night, getting ready for Monday morning over in the States. The market has uh, dropped down a little bit, so down 4.5%. This was up near sort of 1.7 trillion, so now down at 1.61 trillion. And we're waiting to see what will happen sort of first thing Monday morning when the markets open in the States. There obviously has been that weekend pullback that I suspected would come. Uh, you know, this was up around sort of 42000 ish dollars, and now it's dropped back down to sort of just under $40,000. And again, like I said, I expected something like this. It doesn't mean I knew it was coming, but I just expected that we would have some kind of retracement. That's usually the way it works. You know, uh, on the weekends, things tend to, tend to drop down just a little bit. All right, but let's have a look. 1.61 trillion Bitcoin dominance, 46%. So it has dropped down. It was up around 48%. Uh, and gas prices just kind of hovering around 24. So again, that's about $1.29 for just a kind of basic sort of transaction. Nothing sort of too flash. Smart contract transactions cost you a little bit more. But as we can see, it's uh, mainly red. Uh, across the board so let's have a look has anything performed well in the last 24 hours all right bitcoin cash there we go uh, up 20 percent quant network doing all right digibyte terra luna uh, there's a few gains there but look really not too much at all and that's to be expected considering you know the whole market is down four and a half percent so one really good double digit move bitcoin cash uh, Quant, okay, not a bad sort of gain. Same with Digibyte, Terra Luna, uh, and you know, uh, Content Value Network. So they're just getting into the kind of, excuse me, lower single digit sort of gains. Now, any gain's a good gain. Don't get me wrong, we'll take it. But really, as I say, you know, 15% above in 24 hours is what I would call a good gain. So really only one coin with a good gain. But let's then have a look at losses. What hasn't done so well, considering the entire market is down. Whew, there we go. Sirecoin, big dump. Same with uh, Rune Thorchain, massive dump. Zero X, Synthetics back down as well. IOTA, look, all kind of, you know, double digit losses and up around the high double digit losses. Uh, again, Sirecoin had a really good loss. But look, then we do get into the kind of mid to low level uh, single digit losses as well. And that's, again, sort of pretty standard considering, you know, where the market is. But this could all change very quick. So let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. All right, here we are. As we can see, one, two, three red candles in a row now. Now this candle has only just sort of opened, so it's four o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning over a stateside, stateside time, so UTC time. So we're waiting for sort of eight o'clock in the morning, so still a couple of hours away, nine o'clock in the morning, to see if the markets are gonna open up strong. But we did have a good clean rejection from this kind of 42K range, just about there. We can see it was, uh, you know, on the money basically, wicked a little bit above, but then we pushed down. So what we need to keep in mind is that this could be us continuing to go back down lower, maybe come and uh, retest this kind of $30,000, $28,000 level, or maybe we just got to come back down and, you know, test the 36000 chop around a bit. We just have to wait and see. And the honest truth is I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but considering we had all this, this is probably just going to close the CME gap in all fairness because there would have been a CME gap created somewhere over here so I would say this comes down closes that CME gap that happened over the weekend and then hopefully we start to make our way back up and again we've got to you know we've got to get above this 200 day moving average and we've got to break this down trending line we want to break out above it you know we don't have to, but, you know, break out above it, come back down, retest it before we then make our way back up. Would be textbook good. Doesn't have to be textbook good, though. We can just break above it and then, you know, start to chop around here and never come back and retest it. But key is to break through it and it not be a fake out that we break through and then just simply get stuck back under and have to keep going lower. So we're not out of the woods just yet. All right, look, because it's sort of Sunday stateside time, uh, I'm not going to go through any news stories. I don't think there's too many interesting news stories going on. So what I want to do is give you a breakdown of actually what I have in my portfolio. So I did this uh, a while ago, and I just want to show you sort of where I am at uh, and the things that I've invested in. So number one, 
All right, Ethereum. And again, I uh, put most of my money into this about a year ago. So I was lucky enough, I was picking this up a little bit cheaper. I was getting it around 250. I think the cheapest I got some was 180, $220, something like that. But on average, $250. And Ethereum is currently making up 43% of my portfolio, a little bit over 43, but this is how it's performed in that time. So again, we had this big blow off top here and I wish I had been taking some profit. Unfortunately, I sold at 21,000 uh, and rebought at around about 21,000. Now, not all of it. I just unfortunately missed it uh, and yeah, didn't time it all that well, but now it's slowly starting to track back up because as you can see, we're at around about sort of 2400 right now, which is not too bad. But that's a pretty good performance. And again, I just, I, I timed things wrong there. Didn't sell, uh, sold too early. Sold my Bitcoin and uh, my altcoins all sort of at the same time, whereas I really should have sold my Bitcoin and then held on to my altcoins to let them uh, run even further because I didn't sell my altcoins anywhere near the top. But don't get me wrong, I did make good profits. But Ethereum, that makes up 43% of my uh portfolio all right next bitcoin so here we go and again i was lucky enough i got bitcoin under sort of average buy-in price of around about sort of eight thousand four hundred dollars thereabouts definitely bought some for more uh, and did manage to buy some for a little bit less but not a whole lot average is sort of eight thousand four hundred eight thousand nine hundred and this is how it's performed in the last sort of year. So again, I've had this for a year, but again, I've been buying, I stopped buying Bitcoin at I think around about, oh, I think the most I paid for it was like maybe 39,000 and that was when it was coming back down. Before that, I think I stopped buying Bitcoin just after it got over above about sort of 24, 28,000, thereabouts. But generally it's been uh, traveling not too bad. And as we can see, uh, from the charts, we got up to 42 and now we're back down to about 39. Now, Bitcoin does make up 25% of my portfolio. It used to be a lot more, but Ethereum has just uh, way outperformed it. So I may have to adjust that at some stage in the future, but I really like uh, Ethereum. I think it's going to do amazing stuff. But, you know, whether I want Ethereum to be making up half of my portfolio or not, not exactly sure. We'll have to wait and see. But Bitcoin... Uh, been doing all right for me and again making up 25% of my portfolio right my next biggest holding holding is polygon so that makes up 6.57% uh, uh, so about six and a half percent now again I was lucky enough I was getting Matic back here uh, not quite there uh, I got it at about here actually so this isn't the exact date but I was picking it up at about just under two cents so 0 0.18 is where I got it and uh, 0 0.29 so between sort of you know two and three cents is where I picked it up and then I mean look how it's performed it did amazingly well uh, and seems to be just kind of tapering off going sideways at the moment we are in a sideways market but that is my third biggest holding at six percent so as you can see and the only reason polygon makes up six percent is because I didn't really sell any and it did so well otherwise most of my altcoin positions were not more than really maybe sort of one to two percent of my portfolio it's just that they've grown so much that is the reason it's got to here so there we go Matic is my sort of third biggest holding uh, overall but again it made up a very tiny percent originally so then we're going to move on to ADA likewise uh, I didn't you know my ADA position now is around about five and a half percent of my total portfolio originally it was about one percent maybe even under one percent and I was lucky enough to pick up ADA at about eight sort of cents ish so again sort of down in these prices thereabouts is where I was lucky enough to pick it up it was before here but about eight cents was my average buy-in and then we can just see how well it's done and that's why it has got so high so ADA makes up six percent all right, my favorite project, but it's got a lot of drama going on at the moment. Synthetics Network. So this now takes uh, makes up 3.5% of my portfolio. Now, again, I was lucky enough. I was buying this under a dollar. I got it at about 89 cents. Now, not all of it. Unfortunately, I didn't play it all that uh, well, and I was buying uh, Synthetics Network token at sort of $24, $22. And I've sort of been buying it on the way down. I haven't bought too much lately. 
But if it sort of patters, uh, peters out, I should say, patters out, peters out, I am going to look to buy more. I still believe in synthetics. I think they'll get around all the regulatory stuff. Maybe they'll add KYC and all the rest of it to their platform. I just can't imagine they're going to let it run uh, free of any regulation. I think that will be the end of it. They won't be able to shut synthetics down as such because it's uh, a DAO, decentral, uh, decentralized uh, and autonomous and all the rest of it. But they will make it so that anyone using it won't be able to take their profits out of it and then never cash them in anywhere. And that's how they'll get to people. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with synthetics. And I will be very careful uh, investing more money into synthetics until I've just got a better understanding of where it's going to go. I won't be panic selling any of what I have but I am still a little bit concerned about it, but I'm still super bullish. Like if they can get around the reg, excuse me, the regulation and that, I think they're going to be absolutely massive. So it makes up three and a half percent of all my portfolio. XRP, now I got in at originally about 21 cents, bought a whole stack and uh, continued buying up to around about 50 cents or something, sold it all at around about here. Uh, no, I sold it for 19 cents, basically. I sold it for less than I bought it. Panic sold. I, I regret doing it, but that's what I did. And then I re-bought in not too long ago. Uh, I think I bought in at around about 68 cents. So I'm kind of kicking myself. If I had have just held and not panicked, uh, I would have been fine. And again, it was somewhere way down in here. Literally sold for 19 cents. And so that was about two cents less than what I originally bought it for. But... Sold some altcoins, took some profits, uh, and got myself an XRP position again. I'm, I'm wishing I never uh, sold it, but what can you do? And XRP is making up 2.7% of my portfolio. Next is Chainlink. So Chainlink makes up 2.3% sort of, of my portfolio. I was buying this at around about sort of $8. And again, I've bought on the way up, and I've also sort of bought on the way down. Uh, Chainlink has performed extremely well for me. And yeah, making up... 2.3% on my portfolio. Next, VeChain. Again, I got this at, you know, pennies, like less than a cent, and I watched it go up to 25 cents. I did take some profits, uh, and I've also bought back in, and now it is sitting at about 8 cents. So again, I was buying it under a cent, uh, and basically I've sort of 8x my money on uh, thought uh, v, VeChain, but I didn't put a whole lot into it. Again, the reason it makes up such a big part of my portfolio is because of how well it's performed. But VeChain makes up 1.8% of my portfolio. All right, Aave. So Aave makes up just a little bit over a percent of my portfolio. Now, I originally bought Aave Lend, or the Lend token. I think I was buying it at three cents, something like that. Uh, then I changed it into the actual Aave token. So you have to take 100 of them. So uh, I think I was buying Aave at around about sort of three dollars or something like that an Aave token and again it has you know made it all the way up to something silly like six hundred dollars so it performed extremely well uh, and I have bought some other Aave but that is currently making up yeah about one and a half percent thereabouts of my portfolio Aave and really there's only 16 million of these uh, getting around so I don't plan on selling too many of these at all and they're bringing out Aave Pro with KYC and all the rest of it for institutions so I am quite bullish on Aave. I, don't get me wrong, I'll sell some, absolutely, but I won't be selling too many, uh, and I do have my Aave staking on the Aave platform as well. All right, next we go on to Polkadot. So Dot makes up just under 1% of my total portfolio, and I bought this, uh, oh God, I, I can't even remember what price I bought it for, but uh, haven't really sold any, I've only bought some more, but I did buy some uh, sort of pretty high and I am looking to start to buy some more again because it's gone on a bit of a run since what do we got back here? Uh, 21st of July, uh, it was $11 and is now currently sitting at oh, nearly $20. It's nearly, you know, 2x. It's nearly doubled its money from there. And then the other big play in my portfolio is Uniswap. So Uniswap is currently making up just under 1% of my total portfolio. 
Now, unfortunately, I have only lost money on Uniswap. Uh, I have been buying it on the way down. So I don't mind losing more. I'm still super bullish on Uniswap. Uh, it is a long-term play. I don't really plan to sell much uh, at all, but I wasn't buying at its all-time highs. Hang on, let me go and have a look, and I'll tell you. Uh, my average buy for Uniswap is $26, and it's currently sitting at, what are we right now, $21. So... I'm just under, now again, that's my average buy. I think, what's the most expensive I paid for Uniswap? Because I originally got in and sold out, $39. Uh, that's my most expensive buy. And again, it was up around 45 So I've been buying it uh, sort of on the way down as it's dipping. And it looks like hopefully it's flattened out here. So I do plan to buy myself uh, more Uniswap. Now my other biggest buy uh, and again, th these are all about 1% of my total portfolio is KNC. So again, this was a little bit more, but KNC's been a, yeah, it just, it hasn't performed anywhere near as well as what I thought it was going to do. I mean, it had a pump. I didn't take really any profits and then it's kind of fallen back down. I'm still holding on it. I'm waiting for them to start the staking up again because I've got the uh, KNC tokens and they used to pay me an ETH and now they've got layer two and all the rest of it. Uh, going on but there's no staking at the moment that I'm aware of and I could be wrong I haven't followed up with it for a while but when I've gone over to the staking page there's been nothing going on there so I will have to uh, check back in but they are my biggest holdings now what we're going to do is look at some of my you know more speculative sort of stuff so where was Uniswap all right engine coin I don't really feel like engine speculative uh, again I bought it fairly cheaply uh, and I've just held on to it uh, and it performed really well. Didn't take any profits though at all. I uh, held on to all my engine and it looked like it's petered out. So I'll probably be looking to buy some more engine. And again, now all of the coins that we're looking at, they are well under 1% of my total portfolio. Secret network token. Now this doesn't give me enough data. I bought it when it was uh, Enigma token and uh, swapped it over to get the secret network token. And I think I was picking it up for around about sort of 30 cents uh, thereabouts and it is currently sitting at a dollar so again basically a 3x but when it was at its peak I mean it was doing extremely well I'd basically 10x my money from there and it really does look like it's flattening out at the moment so this is another token I'll be looking to buy more of I want to buy ones that haven't started to run already secret network feels like it's uh, flattening out uh, as does sort of Uniswap uh, and there's a few other coins, Engine as well. So really Uniswap, Engine and Secret Network Token. Uh, when I uh, get my next pay, they're the coins that I will be uh, focusing on mainly because all the others are already starting to pump a little bit. The graph, same thing, nice flattening out pattern. Uh, it was just going up and up and up and had this big pump and now it's had this sell off. And I did take some profits uh, almost near the top, not quite near the top, but a little bit. And now I am, I have scaled in a little bit on the way down and I'm at about break even with the graph. So as we can see, it's nice and flat here. So for me, the graph is another one that I'll be looking to buy more of because I think it's still got uh, a lot of uh, upside to it. Now they do have a token distribution that can affect that, but I see the graph as a very long-term uh, sort of hold as well. Uh, yeah, it's integrated with so many other you know platforms and things like that a lot of people have integrated with the graph uh, it has been described as the opposite uh, of Chainlink so the Chainlink brings online uh, uh, sorry outside data onto the blockchain uh, and the graph is a way to find data that is uh, on chain at the moment to be able to you know, go through and get all the analytics and things like that of it so I really really like the graph got myself a good position uh, and it is uh, a long-term hold but again out of all my altcoins, I will sell almost 50% of them. Aave, not so much. That's probably the one altcoin I won't sell half of, but I will be selling some. But pretty much every other altcoin, except for uh, Ethereum and Aave, I plan to sell around about 50% of them. And not just in one hit, I am going to scale out when I start to see things kind of pick up. That's my plan. Uh, I am a bit of a trader in that way, but I only have a small portion uh, of my portfolio that I trade with. With the altcoins, it's about 50% because I've seen altcoins that are popular now and they weren't even really around in 2017. And the ones that were super popular in 2017, you hardly even hear from them now. So 
Yeah, I am going to be quite aggressive in taking profits from my altcoins and putting them back into, you know, things like, again, maybe Aave. Uh, I've got a reasonable position in Aave. It's not that I don't want more, but definitely Bitcoin. Uh, and, you know, a little bit into Ethereum, but I still need to see ETH 2.0 roll out before I'm really going to go buy too much more Ethereum. Bitcoin will be uh, my biggest bet uh, of profits. I'm going to put some of my profits back into Bitcoin and then I am going to put some of my profits just into stable coins to earn yield. Uh, you know, you got to watch out with deflation and all the rest of it. Uh, sorry, inflation and all the rest of it. But I don't think the dollar's going to die anytime soon. I think we're still probably a decade away, if not more, from the dollar, you know, kind of losing its, losing its true value. But it could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. All right, Stella, very small position I originally bought in it. Uh, and it's done okay, nothing sort of too crazy, but I do have a position in it. And again, it's it's under 1% of my total portfolio. Filecoin, another one. Uh, unfortunately, I started to buy some quite high, uh, forgetting to look at the charts. Uh, I'm sitting around about sort of even at the moment with Filecoin. So it's uh, sitting around $60. I bought a lot for less than that, not a lot, but a lot of the Filecoins that I had. Uh, or have I should say I bought under $54 but I definitely did buy a few uh, on the higher end I think the most I paid is about 140 150 for a couple of file coins but I bought a majority of them more around kind of the $30 $40 range Litecoin um, it didn't perform half as well as what I thought but I don't know if it's had its big moment I mean it did pump pretty hard here I took a little bit of profit not quite at the top I think I was taking profits more down three three hundred and thirty something like that uh, and I did sell some of my Litecoin to get back into my XRP position it looks like it's kind of uh, tapered off here so I am thinking that I might have to try and buy some more Litecoin but I'm not going to go too heavy into Litecoin because it's just been losing value against Bitcoin for as you know, as long as we can sort of remember, it had its peak in 2018, but since then it just keeps getting beaten by Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the better uh, buy, but you know, other than when Litecoin has a pump. And so we'll have to wait and see. I don't think Litecoin's dead. Mimblewimble, uh, there's going to be cross chain with ADA, and they now have that uh, payment rail that we were talking about the other day where you can actually buy things with Litecoin. So I haven't given up on Litecoin yet. I just, I'm not going to pour too much money into it when it's been, you know, fairly quiet for a while. But that's usually a sign uh, that things are getting ready to pump. Sorry, especially when you know things have been happening in the background. Just not quite a lot. All right, Audius. Now, I got absolutely sort of wrecked in Audius. Uh, it got way up to sort of $2 something. I bought under $2 and then under a dollar, but it just continued to go down. So I did sell half of my Audius, or I swapped it, I should say. I didn't sell it. I swapped half of my Audius uh, at about a 50% loss uh, into some XRP, but I've held on to my other audio or Audius as well. Got that staking, and I possibly will buy some more because it looks like it's kind of flattened out and hopefully getting ready to start to make another move. Again, that's a big hopefully though. All right, Terra Luna. Bought Terra Luna ages ago. Still haven't got around to staking it. I've been really silly not doing it. Uh, and it's, you know, just kind of, yeah, not done a whole lot for me, mainly because I haven't been staking it, which I know is really silly. But there's only so much time of the day and I'm chasing other things and doing stories like this. I just haven't got around to doing it. So that is something that I'll probably do today. I think I'll have to get my act together and start staking it. Cosmos, bought it ages ago, got it staking. It hasn't really taken off. It had a lot of promise. People were really excited about it considering it's uh, interoperable with all these other chains and things. And yeah, it just has not done anything, uh, you know, sort of great. And there is even talk that even the sort of the founder and people who are behind the Cosmos coin have said that they really don't know if the Cosmos coin itself will have any real uh, value in the future. The chain itself, the blockchain, great, uh, interoperable with just about sort of everything. But as for the Cosmos coin itself, whether it'll uh, have any sort of value in the future, we'll have to wait and see. Hence why I'm not buying any more Cosmos. I am simply just letting the Cosmos that I uh, have purchased stake and we'll wait and see what happens. If things change, I might buy some more Cosmos. But at the moment, there's just uh, nothing 
great happening on the Cosmos chain for the token at least not so much on the Cosmos chain they got the gravity decks coming out soon that could be really big but we'll just have to wait and see so again a very tiny percent I think this would literally be 0.05% uh, uh, of my portfolio right Voyager token again I wanted to uh, get the 500 the minimum required to get staking rewards uh, I'm not a US resident though obviously I'm Australian so I have to wait until they can open this up to uh, international people before I can use it so again 500 uh, of the Voyager token I can't remember exactly what price I bought in I'm a little bit in profit now I think or uh, sitting about even so I really don't care sort of what happens but the Voyager token did quite well for a while there and they are opening up to international people so I want to have the minimum 500 that I can uh, yeah start to stake and earn some rewards Chili's had to get some in the NFT space and all the rest of it and you know social tokens and things like that like Raul Paul spoke about he actually bought into Chili's uh, that isn't the reason I bought into Chili's I bought into it before I knew he had but I just like what they're doing with sporting clubs uh, the soccer clubs overseas they have come to America and I think they've struck up a deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, and they're looking at you know other American clubs as well and I do think the kind of NFT space uh, with sports and things like that uh, and those kind of tokens you know club tokens and things like that which could be built on Chili's uh, you know could be really big hence why I've got a position in Chili's and what I really like about it is look at this base it's literally just been ranging for you know a little bit over a week now so Chili's is another one that I'll be looking to add to because it hasn't sort of started to pump it's just running sideways all right Alpha Finance bought some a while ago uh, at a loss in it staked half of it I have the other half just sitting there uh, waiting to see if it pumps now it is just going sideways so this is another one I'll probably try to buy because it's uh, making a good base which makes me think that people are still buying it and that it's probably going to get ready to start to pump because it did have a pump here and I bought it a lot cheaper than $2.50 not a whole lot cheaper but I bought it cheaper than $2.50 and now I've just got to wait and see if it'll start to pump but this is looking promising and the last two is Theta. Theta Fuel uh, and Theta. Now, I need to get a lot more to stake. I want to be able to stake, but I just don't have anywhere enough. Uh, I think you need to have a 1,000 Theta tokens. And I think that, uh, yeah, what are they? About $4 at the moment or $6. There we go, 4 $6 thereabouts. Uh, so I need uh, quite a lot more. I literally, I don't think I've even got 50 Theta tokens a lot less so I need to get to the minimum of 1000 to start to stake and I really like what Theta did uh, I just thought I'd missed it uh, and then it started to come down uh, and I think I bought oh, what was the price I started to buy Theta at this will be interesting I think I'm at a loss with Theta but not by too much I think like maybe 10% where are we alright yeah I'm at a 15% loss with Theta Fuel and an 8% loss with Theta my average buy is six dollars thirty six uh, for the theta token and it's currently at about five dollars something so I still see massive upside definitely looking to get uh, a lot more theta when I can so this is something I'll be buying more of uh, not so much the theta fuel but the actual theta token itself because it will earn theta fuel I will buy some more theta fuel but I yeah well we'll have to wait and see but anyway look that's a breakdown of my portfolio and all the coins that I own so there is quite a number of coins in there and I know some people are probably gonna say it's way too many and look in some ways I agree in other ways I don't what I wanted to do is break it up into categories some layer one stuff so again ADA uh, dot uh, ethereum I don't have any Solana I've you know been contemplating getting Solana but again you can't have it all so I've got some layer one stuff I Bitcoin some sort of layer two stuff polygon uh, NFT spaces so again theta Chili's Audius, things like that uh, and then I definitely have a good position uh, in the DeFi space as well so I wanted to make sure I had a good sort of broad exposure of all of those things and I have bought most of them well not most of them all of them under the all-time highs uh, and particularly you know Theta and that I mean again I was buying at six dollars it's all-time high it was up around what 13 14 dollars if it get back if it gets back to there I'm doubling my money already let alone if it goes into price discovery I think it's 
you know, a good chance, uh, you know, I could probably triple, quadruple my money quite easily. Not that I plan on selling all of it, but if it, you know, triples, quadruples, five X's or something like that, I probably will sell just enough uh, to get my uh, initial back initial profit back but then again maybe not i really do feel like theta has long-term value but again you know we'll have to wait and see i probably will end up selling half actually of these that's just the way it goes as you know if this goes sideways for a while uh you know i'll be happy and i may have to look to buy into theta to do the staking uh in the next bear market but anyway that's it from me that's my portfolio that's my breakdown Love to know what you have. If you can go down to the comments below and let me know what you've invested in uh, and we'll see if it's somewhat similar to mine. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. The market's down, but if you did, congratulations to you because you outperformed the market and I'll see you next time.